There are many benefits for investment casting, which many people don't even know. Investment castings allow you to cast in dimensions that are not obtainable in other processes. We can cast items in that you actually can't machine it. If you're making your part through machining, you're wasting a lot of time, a lot of material. You don't have a bunch of chips on the floor, which is just dollar bills you're throwing away. Where an investment casting could cast you apart near net shape. A, a lot of engineers, when they're designing a part, they don't realize the savings that they could achieve through investment casting. We can reach a near net shape quicker than they could machine it. In fact, we could put 20 complex parts on one tree, get it cast before your machinist could set up on just part number two. The nice thing about investment casting, you have consistency. From one part to the next, it's cookie cutter. Many of our parts are used as is after casting without any machining. We do investment castings. We have been around since 1960. We make uh, mainly small parts intricate. The castings that fit Shellmet the best would fit in your hand. The more efficiently we can make a part, we can pass the cost savings on to you. And we can cast undercuts, we can cast passageways, we can cast that near net shape that will either bring that product in and it'll go right from your dock to your floor. We can walk the customer through anything that they need to know. We're experts at what we do. What we've always said here is that we need to be an aspirin, not a headache. An investment casting has a, a tolerance of plus or minus five thousandths per inch, which is very impressive. This is a wax pattern. It is the net shape of the final casting once it becomes a casting. In the investment casting process, 10% is normal for scrap rates across the industry. But here at Shellmet, if you order a thousand parts, we'll shoot to give you a thousand perfect parts. I have the most interesting job in the world. People come to me and say, hey, I invented this. How do I bring this to market? So Shellmet looks at this and says, does it belong here? You'd be amazed at how many requests for quote we get, and they're not investment castings. Is it an investment casting? And if it is, then we keep it here. And if it's not... We know so many different processes, from die castings, uh, sand castings, forgings, fine sand castings. You pretty, you pretty well name it. We'll uh, recommend and go out to other processes that are better fit for that customer. So we'll get calls from, uh, say, an engineer. Many times they think they know what they want, but once they talk to us, they might change an alloy. Some clients might know that they want a steel, but they don't know what steel will get them the hardness that they need. Some clients know that they want stainless steel, but they don't know which one will give them the corrosion resistance that we need. And they have this idea, they have a drawing for a part, and we can help them choose the right alloy. Or once we work with them, we might give them a suggestion to say, you know, if you just change this or you put a radii here, it's going to cost you less to make the part. And usually they, they grab onto it. It saves them a lot of money. It saves them a lot of time, too. One of the, the things that we're innovative about is being able to cast thinner walls than other casters. Typically, you would want a wall to be 125,000 thick, but we've already perfected parts that are right around 65 to 70,000 thick. And you, when you look at finish, the finish of most castings on a print is 125 RMS. But when it comes to shell mat, you're going to get one of the best finishes in the industry, which is rated somewhere between 80 to 90 RMS. Typically, the, the biggest fallacy with investment casting is cost. Uh, many people think tooling is very, very expensive. No, it's not. If, for example, if you compared it to a progressive stamping tool, it might be a couple hundred thousand dollars. A die casting might start at fifty to a hundred thousand. Investment casting, three or four thousand it might start. Most shops don't like low volume prototypes, but Shellmet welcomes that with open arms. You're the customer or the engineer that needs that part that's not made in plastic, not made through SLA or sterile lithography, but in the actual material to test it out, to prove it out. Shellmet does prototype work. Making, uh, going prototyping, we don't know a shop that really does it these days. Uh, do we do it? Sure do. And hopefully it's going to turn into production. And it do always doesn't work that way. But someone has to be out there to help some of these people, these companies, to get into it. 
What we strongly suggest is, is go to printed waxes. One of the most cool things about investment casting is the opportunity to take and use printed wax patterns. No tooling involved at all. And then what we'll do is we'll run five or ten parts, whatever you want. And put them on the trees, send them through the process where they get molded, evacuated in the autoclave, go right to the pouring table, and you get finished metal product cast out of the alloy that you designated. Of all the processes, if you need a small quantity to prove your design, this is the process you want to use. So when you think prototyping, think Shelmet. That's what we call the Protocast program. Protocast. Protocast is only available at Shelmet Precision Casting. Cost is big today, understandably considering how expensive things have gotten over time. Investment casting still is a good deal. Most successful engineers and people we speak with that want a part quoted are the ones that are open to listen to our 60 plus years of experience. We can look at something and see what change might need to be made or a suggestion that can be made in a material or in a dimension or something that it makes it easier or more cost efficient for it to come to market. And that gives us the innovation that we need to push the project forward and bring it home. They can get parts many times much less costly, much faster, and the, the success rate is pretty much guaranteed at 100%. We're never going to be the cheapest, but we're not the most expensive either. We'll be somewhere in the middle. And the most important thing is, is that if you've got a problem, we're there to help you with your problem. We're here for a relationship and for a long-term one. And that's why most of our customers, we have customers back from the early 60s that were still with us today. So we must be doing something awfully right. People ask the strength of the casting. What's it compared to for a bar stock? Well, in theory, the casting should be stronger. Why? Well, if I put my fingers together like this, you're gonna pull my hands apart quite easily. But if I interlock them like this, like the grain structure being poured, you're not going to pull this apart. Now the grain structure of the metal has to be interlocking to make it strong. And sometimes castings have to be heat treated. And the reason, of course, is, is that you may want to machine it, you may want to harden it. So you have grain structure vertically, horizontally, diagonally in a casting where you don't have that with a continuous feed bar. And speaking of metals or alloys, we pour over a hundred different alloys to customer specifications. If you noticed, our pouring area has induction melting, and we also have electric. So JT, tell them why we have two different type of melting furnaces. We use an induction melting unit to melt all of our ferrous metals, and that uses a very strong magnetic field. And it's pretty cool that a magnetic field can actually melt metal. Uh, for our aluminum alloys, we use just an electric heating element type furnace, and that keeps the metal very still, no turbulence in there, so that it doesn't absorb any gases from the atmosphere. Electric is the best and one of the most rarest way to pour aluminum. Usually aluminum is poured through gas. Electric's more expensive. However, you don't have the turbulence which induction and gas can cause. So your grain structure within the aluminum is very, very good with almost zero porosity. Quality is everything, and our employees know that. But we have these quality control cards, and they list the specific requirements for each job so that no matter what the customer needs, everybody in the plant knows what needs to be done. Yes, we have complete traceability from the first wax pattern to the final shipping of the customer. We know everything that happened to that part, who worked on it, what steps were done. We document that everything was done right. Every casting has to have a way for the metal to get into the casting. It's called a gate. This gate has to be removed and blended into the casting. And that's where our skilled people come in, hand grinding each casting, removing the gate, and giving us the finish that we're looking for. Here at Shellmet, we are a big family. We're, everybody's trying to take care of it. Everybody's here to watch out for each other. And we're just trying to make sure we make it through the day and also we have a pat on the back when we do a good job. When people walk through, they look at the shop. They look at us. 
you know, everyone is summing someone up. And we have an incredible crew. I can't say uh, enough about them. Our suppliers are fantastic. And uh, I can't, and our customers are, we have relationships with everybody. And uh, I wouldn't ask it any other way. We're extremely diversified. We make an awful lot of parts in the agricultural industry. It's one of our, our top customers. Now, if you look around where Shelmet's located, we are in a very large agricultural area. Medical, valve and hydraulics. Food uh, processing equipment. We're even to do electrical distribution. Today, that's extremely important. Wastewater and treatment equipment. Paper manufacturing and mining equipment. You pretty much name it, we work with it. This is a medical aluminum part. This holds a monitor on for anesthesia equipment in the operating room. They came to us and asked us if we could do it. They didn't know if an investment caster could. We said, yes, we can. Why isn't this a wire form? If you look at the part, why? Because first of all, the material is nickel. You could wire form part of it, but then you'd have to start brazing, or you'd have to weld on tabs, which would take another process. Someone might ask us, why wasn't this made as a sand casting? Well, one of the reasons is that it couldn't live with porosity. It's made out of nickel base alloy, which is in common in sand casting. It's difficult to machine. And the other thing is this is for one of the prototypes of one of the space shuttles. You may ask us, why isn't this part machined all from scratch? You can see machine on the outside has been ground, but everything else has been cast in. Even the small oval through hole on the side. Now you might, you might say, well, is it feasible or is it economical? to do it this way. Oh, definitely it is. Here's an interesting part. This is made out of 8620 steel. Uh, the part in the center is cast. The part on the outside is machined and it has a press fit. Sounds good, right? They made the whole part as one and saved them an awful lot of money. This is a small part, no question about it. Customer came to us and they asked us if we could make this little head. We, we said to them, what's it going on? And they showed us the whole print. And I said, why don't we just cast the whole thing? He said, you can do that? He said, sure can. So he went from 14 different parts down to one. This is made out of a seven tool steel, is a shock resistant tool steel. It can take a hit. And they're making these stampings, assemblies. You got your, your pins here, a lot of different parts. And we do the engineer on this project. And he asked us if we could make certain parts. So why don't we try to cast it all as one? He says, you can't do that. I said, we can try it. In investment casting, many times investment casters are like doctors are practicing. Everyone knows the doctor's always practicing. And we did the same thing. So we thought we'd try something. We actually gated on the part and poured through the part to the other side, which that's taboo in investment casting. And it worked. We converted from a, from a stamping assembly to a one-piece unit. If, if you're not quite sure of what process to make the part in, just give us a shout. We know investment casting, we know other processes, and we know where to take the parts, where they should go. Now, do we do those other processes? No. We specialize in investment casting. That's our niche. That's what we've done for 60 plus years. We're a team working for you. If you take care of your employees, you take care of your suppliers, you take care of your customers, what else would occur? You don't, you don't, you treat them the way you want to be treated. You're not going to, you're not going to sell out. You don't do that to people. And that's why you can't just look at the cost of a part and make a decision just on pricing. You have to look at the value of the relationship.